school Harry. There's plenty of news about what Harry's wife is now getting up to. The usual PR puff pieces about her reinventing herself. (sighs) And, of course, news about her returning to Instagram, which has attracted some sarcastic commentary from Hannah Betts in The Times, which is worth touching on, as we also contemplate what all of this means for Harry. Reports of the artist formerly known as Harry's wife's public demise have been greatly exaggerated, I dare say, that many of you feel rather dismayed that that's the case. As a character in one of the soap operas in which she didn't quite make her name might have declared, she's back, bitches. And she's going old school. Reruns of Suits, her 12-year-old legal drama, are enjoying a resurgence on Netflix. Alas, this is not on account of the sometime Duchess's nuanced performance. Rather... The the series proves so undemanding, it can be watched ambiently while doing some more vital task, cleaning the fridge, say, or deworming the dog. A kind of entertainment wallpaper, lift music plus visuals. More thrillingly, she appears to be returning as a virtual presence. A breaking Instagram account has emerged in which an image of pink peonies, back to the peonies again, Scream, her favourite flower, and the single word, Harry's wife, scream, her like total name, have materialised. A source confirmed, yes, that's her. Everyone in Hollywood is talking about the relaunch being imminent. Perhaps she's timing matters for post-US Labour Day, the 4th, then low, like a yogic biosignal processing disc wearing Norma Desmond, she'll be ready for her close-up. Harry's wife's last account with sidekick Prince has, at Sussex Royal, boasted 9.4 million followers before it was deactivated in 2020. Before her royal hitching in 2018, her personal following stood at more than 3 million, while tens of thousands of groupies signed up for her lifestyle blog, The Tig. Her new account can already claim more than 90,000 acolytes, and marketing types predict that she could make a million dollars per post. Whether everyone in Hollywood really is talking about this, and in what terms, remains a moot point, given those awkward $20 million grifter accusations from a Spotify executive. Regardless, pending peonies plus a new talent manager spells a regrouping behind her true calling, that of influencer, the defining non-career of our age. I'm pausing there, That's rather apt, isn't it? That she ends up being that, the influencer, which isn't a career, which is the type of individual that jets off to Dubai, faking it till they make it, spending money they haven't got in an attempt to try and make more money, delivering something which nobody needs, which is of very little interest, and just the stuff that people scroll through by going, ooh, that's nice. Bread and circuses, of course. Entirely apt for someone as beige and dull as Harry's wife. Harry's wife's interpretation of Duchessdom was always more akin to these loquacious, let strategically vacuous thought leaders. Their trade is the luxury backdrop of how they live their lives, rather than the biscuit factory opening stuff minor royals devote their lives to. For a start, she can be one of the top dogs rather than a bit player, which of course suits her because of her narcissism. When she was in the royal family, she was a bit player. She wants to be a top dog because her narcissism dictates that that's where she belongs. And there are simply so many more free handbags. She'll basically be expanding her role as a briefcase girl on deal or no deal, albeit instead of wads of cash, she'll be toting lifestyle guff. Another self-professed career woman whose product looks set to be herself is the former Prime Minister's wife, Carrie Johnson. Three weeks ago, the mother of three made her Instagram account public. She now shares shots of her offspring, gal pals, holiday locations and clothing with 85,000 viewers and counting. Meanwhile, legions of middle-aged women, which of course will include Harry's wife, appear to be acting under the delusion that they are public figures appearing on Instagram, tossing back their hair, addressing us as guys and spouting teary platitudes about their divorce, acquisitions or self-esteem issues. 
Many of these individuals, of course, are narcissists, unaware that that's what they are, seeking the fuel through their outpourings of supposed grief and misery and sometimes joy on social media. One need only look at the success of the dismal Sex in the City sequel, and just like that, lesser to television show than a barely fictionalised influencing platform, ready to be downloaded onto its virtual substreams. One fly in the ointment, however, is that whilst Harry's wife has gone old school by returning to social media, there does appear to be a relaunch of old school Harry. The old school Harry of the drinking, playing polo, hanging out with the lads sort of old school Harry. One only needs to look at his recent jaunt to foreign parts with Nacho Fugueras to see this is the resurgence of old school Harry. And it's not a surprise. After all, when he's away from his handler, he's not subjected to the stressor of her telling him what to do, giving him the rolling eye, giving him a curled shoulder, barking an order at him. We all remember that Harry was known as the Playboy Prince, somebody who was largely liked by people, given a degree of a pass after what happened with his mother and carried out his role within the royal family. People liked him. And then his personality changed. Yes, it would have built on some existing aspects of it, his strong narcissistic traits coming to the fore, but as I have explained to you many times before, the involvement of a narcissist often changes people, and it has with Harry. He fell out with his family. He didn't bother with certain aspects of his new in-laws. He lost his friends. He lost the popularity that he once had. He lost a lot of support amongst the public, people deeming him to be an entitled brat and an arsehole. But this doesn't just happen as a consequence of Harry's own evolution. This occurred because of the influence of his wife upon him. And when he's away from her, bits of the old Harry start to come back. And it'll be interesting to see, if they still remain a couple, whether these two old-school approaches are actually compatible with one another. Harry's wife wants to show the world all of the shiny stuff. Harry's not as bothered about all of that. He'd rather just get on with life, enjoying it and spending time with his family. If he's to go back to playing some polo, going down bonkers night spot, etc., is this not only going to be a threat to the control of Harry's wife because he's doing his own thing, but also is it going to threaten the new image that she's going to put forward? Will old school Harry present an even more difficult thing for her to control because it doesn't fit with the image that she's trying to project through her Instagram account. The fact is that there's likely to be a clash. Harry will enjoy having this freedom. It will suddenly feel like, I'm my old self again, the return to the way that he was. And in so doing, not only does that mean he wants more of it, which means he wants less of being around her as old school Harry, it also means that that is not going to accord with the brand image that she wants to project, and therefore is likely to hasten his disengagement. He may care less if he feels that he's getting something of his old self back, that he's actually enjoying himself once again, rather than having to eat beige foods with a beige person. And interestingly, the news article ends by identifying this shift with regard to Instagram with the author stating, I'd appreciate it if Harry's wife could learn how to pronounce Tig, as in Tianello has a N sound, as in Noki doofus. Again, the journalist landing another blow on Harry's wife as a consequence of her inability to pronounce Tianello as describing it as Teak. Tig with a hard G. Clearly, the author of that piece doesn't have much time for Harry's wife, and it's hardly a surprise. Let's have a quick blip below the line as to what people think about this old-school approach from both Harry's wife and Harry. El Gannon writes, dull, dull, dull. Henry Yelf. Harry's wife and Harry are young people who've made some errors of judgment and I'm not a fan of their work or style. 
Priscilla Cullen, I despair at the brainlessness of the people that follow these influences. Jay Gibbs, yay, old Harry is coming back. Q Paps buying gum shields for those intimate moments outside nightclubs. David Mulligan, who cares? Irrelevant to people's lives. Stop reporting about this non-entity. Jay Hughes, from the tone of most of these comments, I suspect that Harry and the Harridans' day is done. Frederick Matthews, the picture of Harry's wife, would suggest she's eating too many processed foods. Mr. G. Freeman. Harry's wife is coming back. There's no way back after her unsubstantiated assertions with Oprah. Michael Layfield. Does anyone care? I'd rather you reported on something newsworthy. Mr. Nick Shepherd saw the headline and decided to watch some paint dry. Malcolm Hockman. What the fuck is a thought leader? Could someone define it? For me, please. Julian Lloyd, I have no idea what any of this means. Jan Benfield, why give them publicity? Elizabeth Vernon, can anybody tell me what an influencer is? Well, once again, unfavourable commentary about Harry's wife and raises the observation that all school Harry may be in the resurgence also. And that's not going to be compatible with old school Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.